Hello, this is Alex. Um, we are the 1st of July and I am in Berkeley, California. Uh, I'm spending here one week to do some experiments at the uh, Advanced Light Source. This, this is a synchrotron that is located uh, in the National, uh, Berkeley National Laboratory. So first, uh, you can see the fantastic view we have from the lab. So this is the, all, we can see all the Bay Area and San Francisco and the uh, Golden Gate Bridge. Okay, so I travel here with Bastien, who is a PhD student, and both uh, we are working uh, on the beamline 532. So we are doing some experiments uh, on carbon nanotubes with an instrument that is called uh, scanning transmission X-ray microscopy. So in this video, I will show you what sort of experiment we are doing. So now let's go to the synchrotron. First, let's talk a bit about synchrotron in general. So what is a synchrotron and how it works? Here you have a view of a synchrotron building in Berkeley. And uh, the synchrotron is called Advanced Light Source, the ALS. On this picture you have a schematic view of what is a synchrotron. So a synchrotron is composed of three main parts. The first one is the booster, which is accelerating charged particles, usually electrons, to a very high speed. Then these electrons they are injected in a big ring, which is called storage ring. They are stored there for several hours. And the length of this ring is in the order of hundreds of meters. Now, when charged particles are moving in this ring, they are emitting a very intense light in the X-ray range. And this is this light that scientists are using for their experiments. The light is then collected in beam lens, where we can put all our instruments. At DLS, there are 42 beam lines in which people are doing experiments in very different fields such as physics, biology, environment, medicine and geophysics. Now I will show you how the experimental station of a beam line looks like. At DLS we are working on beam line 532 and this beam line is equipped with a special microscope which is called scanning transmission x-ray microscope. Okay, so on the left here, you have the computer on which we are analyzing the data. Then this big vacuum chamber is the instrument we call scanning transmission X-ray microscope, the STXM. This is Bastien, a PhD student from Namur. And here you have the computer which controls the microscope. And you can see that an experiment is running at this moment. And this side is where we are preparing the sample. And this guy here is Daniel. He's a postdoc at the Beamline and he helped us a lot during our stay there at Berkeley. Okay, so now we are running uh, an experiment. So we have um, I put the sample inside the STXM, and we are uh, doing an analysis of uh, one isolated carbon nanotube. But how is it possible to analyze something as thin as one carbon nanotube using STXM? In fact, this instrument is able to focus X-rays coming from the synchrotron onto a very small spot on the sample and the size of this spot is around 30 square nanometers and this is enough resolution to see one isolated multiple carbon nanotube here is how it works so using the very small beam we have we are scanning a region point by point at one specific photon energy then we slightly change this photon energy and we scan the region again and this is repeated a lot of times so at the end, it gives us a set of images of the same region, but at different photon energies. 
This means that we will have a spectroscopic image of the region with a high spatial resolution. And by processing uh, the data, we will be able to draw a chemical map of this region. So in other words, we can also say that STXM is able to do microscopy with good spatial resolution, but it can also do spectroscopy on the same region. And this is a big advantage compared to other types of microscope. These are data that we took last year. After some processing, we were able to build a chemical map. And it was possible to differentiate the signals of the carbon tubes from signals uh, coming from other carbon objects present in the sample. Here you can see in blue uh, you have the signal from the substrate. In green you have uh, signals from onion-like particles. And finally in red uh, these are the carbon nanotubes. If you want further information about Synchrotron, STXM or about our experiment, you can have a look on this website or you can also read uh, the paper that we published recently in uh, Nanoletters.